da 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 Here we go. Late, I suppose. It's only been eight months and 16 days, but who cares? So now that it took me eight months and 16 days to, to finally do this, we're going to sit down and we're going to rank all the 2021 movies that I saw. And there are 47 of these things. So we're going to get into it. We're going to go quick. Not too quick. I'm going to try to talk. Some of these, you might have to excuse me. I might not remember much, but remember enough. So, bottom of the barrel, number 47, the worst of last year. And if you don't already know, I'll tell you right now, it's Slumber Party Massacre, the remake. Fuck this movie, all right? This was bullshit on a turd. It, uh, nothing but woke bullshit. Disguised as a slasher film. I mean, come on. I I was into it okay. Like there's this whole oh we're gonna we're gonna fight back. I get that, okay. But it just I don't know. Like fighting back against the killer. Sure, I don't. I, don't, I get it. But like, it's the plot of the movie, and it's. It's one of those female agenda films, like Black Christmas 2019. Down to they both have a African American woman with an Afro in, it. and it's just I don't know. This was woke bullshit. The ending where there's a twist reveal that the killer's mother is involved was unnecessary. It just it's it sucks. I'm sorry. Next at number 46 is Survive the Game. And it's an action movie starring Bruce Willis, but Bruce Willis, Willis does almost absolutely nothing. I know he had, you know, problems, but th the rest of it, it would be fine if the rest of the movie around it worked. It doesn't. It's Chad Michael Murray running around trying to take down bad guys. It just, I don't know, it just didn't appeal to me. Number 45 is Sun. Uh, there are people that praise this movie. I didn't particularly care for it. I figured out the twist that the cop was in on it from the entire, from you know a certain point. It just uh, no, I just didn't particularly care for it. Uh, a point to that, and people are getting mad. There's another one people have talked about. Number forty four is Saint Mon. I didn't care for this at all. I barely remember any of it, but I know it was better than the previous two, three. Uh, there were some good, like, scary moments in it, but other than that, I just wasn't into it at all. Number 43 is Prisoners of the Ghost Land. And other than Nicolas Cage, this movie is... There's nothing. There's nothing to it. Uh, you know, it's one of my most, most recent ones, so I remember a lot about it. It's just... Trying to rescue this person's daughter, but the age difference between the two doesn't match. Like, she's 40, Nicolas Cage is 58. And then there's a flashback where she's like a little 10 to 12 year old girl, and Nicolas Cage hasn't aged a day. So, like, he's not younger there than he is now. It doesn't make any sense, and it's just, meh. Number 42 is Till Death. And this, I, the most memorable thing about this is that there was a storm going on. The power went out when I. When I first tried to watch this, there was a, there was a storm and a tornado, and so the power went out, and so I had to wait till the next day to watch this movie, and honestly, it's meh for me. I don't particularly care for Megan Fox anymore. I used to have a crush on her when I was younger, but she's proved to be a very horrible person, leaving her family for Machine Gun Kelly, of all people, and to dress up like a slut. So, in my opinion... I cannot like her. I, I have a hard time differentiating her personal life from her character in this because the character, she cheated on her husband. So, a, you know, if, if it was a better written character and the character was a better person, I might be able to, but the character is maybe less bad as she is, but still bad, and I just can't root for someone. I wanted her to die the whole time. So, uh... Next is, uh, 41 is PG Psycho Goreman. And, really, it's only up this high because the effects, it reminds me of Power Rangers. 
It's really cool, but the kids are fucking annoying, especially that little shit right there. The music things, it's no, she's annoying, and I I wanted the type of gore man to kill her, but doesn't don't kill kids. Michael Myers did, but uh, it just no, I didn't particularly care for. I like the shiny cover, but it wasn't one I went back to. Okay, so number forty is "Don't Breathe" too. And I really enjoyed the first one, but this one really stretched that bound, stretched that believability when you're asking us to root for the guy who uh, had a woman strapped up in his basement, inseminated her with a turkey baster, which people, he admits in this that he's a rapist. I still don't, I guess, if you technically he is, I guess. I don't know. But. I don't know, I just didn't... It, and to go all the way is to make the people breaking into his house far worse people, to make them very, very bad people to try to appeal to, oh, if these people are very, very bad, possibly worse, then I'll have to root for them. But no, I just can't go for anything but the little girl. So, uh, Number 39 is Black Friday, and this is one that I kind of remember. Let's see. Thanksgiving night, you could just... Yeah, the zombie thing. And this, this this was a decent zombie film. It didn't have that whole, oh, he's a human enemy type thing. Bruce Campbell was great. Devin Sawa was good. But it's, I don't know. It just didn't sit well, I guess. It was good, but I guess it just wasn't as good as these other ones. Number 38, nine, 38 is Old. And I enjoyed the cast, but mostly this is a forgettable film. It's one of M. Night Shyamalan's twists that I just don't get. Like, the, just people are experimenting with other people, and it ends with the two kids, now 40-something-year-olds, going to live with their aunt. But they're not kids anymore, so technically, should I just let them go? I don't know. I mean, technically, mentality would be children, but still. Number 37 is The Wrong Turn Remake. And this was a nice switch, especially after going through all those damn movies. Uh, this is up in a higher echelon of those movies as it pertains to this. It just, it's not one I'm going to rewatch anytime soon. I lost an one over this, actually. But, like, uh, the acting was good. I didn't like, like, the, that they found her so quickly. There are people that live in the fucking woods and they're able to find her very quickly. It's like, no. You you live in the woods. You shouldn't have any way to find anyone. Yet you do. It's, I don't know. Number 36 is Pig. Another recent watch. And I thought this was good. It's down this low because I expected it to be, as people were telling it, John Wick, but with Nicolas Cage and a pig. And it wasn't that. It was a character-driven film that worked well but not as well as most of these on the, on, on the list. So we got number 35 is Slacks. And this is just fun from the end. But it's cheesy, it's campy, it's a so bad, it's good type film. And so it sits, not in the middle, but like towards the bottom echelon, but it's fun. Okay, number 34 is Eternals. Now this is better. It's Marvel produced, it's got great actors, but it's too long it's maybe 45 minutes too long like it this could have been a nice hour 30 minute movie hour 45 minute movie and it would have been fine but this is three fucking hours and even though we were on disney plus and i showed my son oh the eternals is here i said but it's three hours and he goes eh that tells you like, if he wasn't interested in it before, knowing it's three hours long, he's not going to change it. And we will have to watch it eventually, because if, if the Eternals come back in some way, shape, or form, he's going to be confused. And, oh, I'll remember that movie that was three hours long that you went, eh, to, so he didn't watch? Yeah. So, uh, number 33 is Army of the Dead. 
Zack Snyder film, uh, who's on, which is on an all lower echelon of this, but there'll be one that's higher up later on. But uh, Army of the Dead was a good film, decent zombie action. I didn't particularly care. Like, they're going to Vegas, it's a heist film, I don't know. But it was fine. Uh, number 32 is Occupation Rainfall, which I just watched. Uh, and the reason it's down this low is, if you watched my review, you would know, Commander Hayes. He's terrible. A terrible person, terrible character, unnecessary character, and that's why it's down this low. All the other action and stuff pretty good. Most of the characters are fine. Gary the Alien is cool. Uh, <clears throat> the 31 is Fortress, another one that was recent. And this was good. Bruce Willis still doesn't do much, but it, the rest of the movie works around so much. Chad Michael Murray is better in this film than he was in Survive the King because he plays a great villain. And I can't wait to watch the next one, which I will watch at some point, uh, review for the next few days, for sure. Next is the Guy Ritchie film. Number 30 is the Guy Ritchie film, Wrath of Man. And from this point on, they're all generally likable to me. But uh, this was good. Jason Statham's great. Uh, is that Josh Hartnett? Yeah. Jerry Donovan. It's great. It's got good action stuff, great character moments, revealing like he's out for revenge for something. It's great. Uh, number 29 is Matrix Resurrections. And while this is probably my number two of the Matrix movies, it did come up short because you have Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, I got that name down, playing Morpheus, sort of. And then you have Jonathan Groff, of all people, playing Smith, sort of. It just, it they're diet versions of what they could be if they were played by the actual actors. Like, in the whole, oh, we're, like, the whole ending of the third film is sort of rewritten because they do the same thing. They basically, they force awakened it. Where, oh, you defeated one enemy, but a bigger enemy came, and now you're back in the Matrix anyway. And it's just like, yeah, that's that's plot convenience. That's just, that's you wrote yourself in the corner with the end. It was supposed to be the definitive end, much like with Star Wars. And you're like, okay, we have to undo this. Let's introduce the bigger enemy. They're back in the Matrix. What if, what if, let me just put this. What if they realize there's a bigger enemy, you know, that the Matrix is still a thing and they're still trying to get people out, but there's a bigger enemy taking over, capturing people. And so they have to go back into the Matrix to stop them. Instead of, like, redoing stuff from the first one, just to, you know, for no reason. All right. So what are we at now? Number 20... Eight is Spiral, uh, and quite simply, I don't know. This didn't feel like a Saw movie to me. The different voice, it's not linked to anything in the Saw universe, but I liked uh, Chris Rock's performance. Samuel Jackson was good, and he was kind of meh, and they're like not going to follow this one up at all with the next one, so... I, I just wish we would get a film that they would actually follow up. Because they had Jigsaw, scrap that for this. They had this, scrap that for whatever they're doing next. I just, apparently John Kramer's going to be in the next one, which also doesn't make any sense. I don't know. But, I don't know. We shall see, right? We shall see. I'm going to put this back here. And at number 27, caught that one, didn't I? Number 27 is Last Night in Soho, an Edgar Wright film. And this was great. The lighting, the music, the acting from Anya Taylor-Joy and uh, what's her name? McKen Thomas and McKenzie and even uh, Matt Smith. It was good. But the reason it's down this low is I don't know if I'm going to reach to watch this. I might watch everything else above this, but I don't know if I'll reach to watch. I might watch some of these that are below it, but I don't know. It was good, though. 
All right. Number 26 is The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It. And, well, it's not the worst. I think The Nun and La, La Llorona are probably worse than this. It's kind of run its course, this franchise, I guess. Um, I don't know. Uh, it was an interesting way to put the whole, there's a trial, and they're trying to convince them that this stuff is real. No one's going to believe that, of course, but I don't know. But it's not bad. I might watch it again at some point. Number 25 is The Forever Purge. And this one was fun. Nice movie. But, you know, it's more message than it is movie, in my opinion. And, yeah, I like the actors in this were pretty good. But, again, not one I'm going to reach for. Hello. Be. My. Victim. Number 24 is Candyman. Before you start blasting at me, I liked this movie. I just think, like with the sequels, if I'm going to watch a Candyman movie, it's going to be the original. And my big problem with this one is that Tony Todd is not Candyman for what one scene. That's it. And they do this whole thing. Like, I don't know. Maybe they couldn't get him to come back for most of it. I don't know. But they're like, oh. And they retcon. Like, oh, he was, like, Danny Robitaille was Candyman, but anyone can be Candyman. No, bullshit. Danny Robitaille is Candyman. You're not changing that. And, that's, and it kind of makes me mad, but it was a good, well-made movie, and I wish people would stop saying Jordan Peele's Candyman because he only produced it. Nia DaCosta. Learn it right. Okay, number 23 is A Quiet Place Part 2. I just lost that piece of paper. The ones that are on streaming, I put a piece of papers. So, I like. The Quiet Place Part 2. I thought this was good. Not as good as the first one. I liked it. Went, went back and showed what happened. Apparently, they're doing a third one that's a prequel that's based on, like, day one or something. And it's like, dude, you just showed us. But it could be day one for somewhere else, I guess. But, yeah. And they bring in Silly Murphy, Killian Murphy's character. And I think... Like, the only reason they did the flashbacks was so they can introduce this character and he has a connection. But it works. But I did like the first one better. All right. Number 22. And this pains me because, you know, I'm a big fan of the franchise. You know, half of those movies are kind of boring to me. Or two of them are boring. But we have Paranormal Activity, The Next of Kin. Uh, and... It's a good movie, but it has nothing to do with the Paranormal Activity movies. It was it's basically a reboot, trying to start something else, and I don't know if it will, but it's fine for what it is. I like the actors. I like the, the story was okay, you know, but, eh. Number 21 is Resident Evil. Rat Welcome to Raccoon City, and this baffles me because people bitching and complaining, oh, those uh, Anderson movies... Uh, me and Jovovich movies, they don't have anything to do with the with the game. We didn't want to cite the game. Here you have a movie that puts two games in one. Yes, I know. It, it's a little, you know, swooshed together, but it is more like the game. You have characters from the game being treated like they're the main characters, and you still bitch and complain. We're not going to get a faithful. This is mostly faithful. It's better than that bullshit series they got on Netflix, I'll tell you that much. But, yeah, I enjoyed it just fine. All right. Number 20. We're in the top 20 now. Space Jam A New Legacy. And quite simply put, uh, why? <laughs> like, why did you why did you do this? Like, there's been rumor that you were gonna, they were going to do one with LeBron James. They waited until after he was out of the NBA. It would have been fun if they did this, like, in 20... In 2002. Nine or ten. Well, he was still big in the basketball game. But now he's just an actor, you know? The whole thing with Michael Jordan is he wasn't an actor. And he was sort of in between. I mean, he went back to playing basketball afterwards, of course. But, you know. And bringing all the video game thing in there was fine. But, eh. If I'm going to watch Space, I'm going to watch the first one. All right. Number 19 is... 
Escape Room Tournament of Champions, and I'm going by the extended cut because that is the intended cut. It is the better version because honestly, when I fart, I, I farted. <laughs> no, when I first watched the theatrical version of this film, I hated it. I was like, what is this? Why bring back uh, what's her face's character? I forgot her name. Uh, who she was obviously dead. Why bring her back? It just makes no sense. And then I thought, okay, let me watch the extended cut. And I was like, this is better. There's whole characters taken out. Isabel Furman taken out of the film. All the characters, whole characters taken out. And this one is better. So I would go, if you're going to watch this, watch the extended cut. It's better. It's not a great film, but it's decent. You know, the extended cut. So, well, the extended cut is just like an alternate cut. It's not really extended. They take out, they change some things. So it's a different cut. Okay, number 18. Venom, Let There Be Carnage. And I don't hate it. As much as other people have, they've hated this movie. It was terrible. I think they, I do think they wasted Carnage, especially Woody Harrelson with just. I hate the superhero movies when they just they have a villain and then they kill him off by the end of the film. Carnage could have been a great overarching villain, but they kill them off and it it's just it's just like Venom in Spider Man Three. It's not necessary. You got to have a more overarching story. It could have been better. And the post credit scene leads into absolutely nothing other than to bring Venom into the MCU in their own way. They could do Agent Venom. Who knows? But number 17 is Cop Shop. And this movie hinges on the great performances of Gerard but Jerry Butler and Frank Grillo. They're great. Great action scenes. Toby Huss is great. As a character, that one guy, is, it's, a, it's a fun movie. Yeah, honestly, from this point up, everything's going to be really positive. We have nobody at number 16. And this is the movie I wanted Pig to be. It's this guy, his daughter's ring or something was taken. He thought, and he finds out it was down in the basement the entire time. But he just goes, falls to the walls, nuts. Killing these bad guys, just, yeah. Number 15 is Black Widow. Uh, there are two movies that reached my top 10. This is not one of them. I thought this was fine for what it was. I liked the performances of David Harbour. And uh, Scarlett Johansson was good. Uh, what's her name? Foreign, Florence Pugh? Pugh! But this felt like it was too little too late for this, this, this character. She's dead. And they were like, oh, we're going to have a Black Widow movie. And, like, I remember when I went to see Endgame in the theater, she died, and I went, spoiler alert for Heaven's Endgame. I'm like, well, what? I guess they're not doing her movie, but they're still doing the movie. It's going to be a prequel set between Civil War and Infinity War. Well, then why didn't you just put the movie out after Civil War? No, you waited too long, and it's too little too late, but it's not terrible by any means. Number 14 is Malignant, and this was a freaky-ass movie. It's James Wan coming back to us doing some horror. And Annabelle Wallace, I believe is her name. Yes, who was also in Annabelle, ironically. Uh, or not ironically. This was good. I think that the whole twist that it's like a, a her like conjoined brother... Killing spoilers, of course. It, fun. And could it do a sequel? They could, but this was good. Number four, 13 is Luca. Another one that I recently reviewed. And this is a fun little Pixar film. Uh, one of the high, one of in the higher echelon of Pixar films, to be honest. Uh, it has great characters, great animation, music's good. It's great. Yes? Hand! Yes, yes, that is your hand. We're all gonna die. I hope so. The Suicide Squad. Uh, I like this better than the first one. But I feel like the whole thing at the beginning, it's very James Gunn, killing off a bunch of characters. But why'd you have to kill off Captain Boomerang? 
Why, 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 why? He was my favorite character in the first one. You kill him off within the first 10, 15 minutes. And I watched this with my son. Before you scold me, it was rated R. There's nothing in this that, that's going to scar him. There's no nudity. There's swearing. There's no nudity. There is the line about a bunch of dicks on the beach, but he, he's too young to know what that means anyway. He's 11, but, you know, he's fine. And this is cool. And I enjoyed King Shark. So, all right, number 11, before we get to the top 10, is the Fear Street Trilogy. Now, I put all three of these together. I've seen all the people's rankings from last year, and they separate them. I don't think you should. I, they're one continuous story. They should be ranked as one. And then go here at number 11. Let me tell you why. I think all the parts are good. The 90s one is probably the worst. But it, no, I think the third one is the worst. Like the parts where they're in. The third part where they're like the, in the older days. I'm not a big fan of that stuff. So I think for me that's the worst. But it's all solid. All great actors. I don't understand why it had to be I forgot her name but she's the main character in the 90s segment and why she had to be in Sarah Fear's she's in Sarah Fear's body but we see it from her point of view so it's her we see instead of the actual Sarah Fear and I think it would have been more if Sarah Fear was and then like they used the same actors to play the roles and it doesn't make sense that Benjamin Flores Jr is Sarah's brother when the actress to play Sarah is white and he's not. It just doesn't make any sense. Unless she's just seeing them because that's her memory. So she sees them as them. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And the dad is white too, so I don't know. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's a fun trilogy. I do recommend it and it is number 11. We are down to the top 10. Rearranging. And... Once I start listening to something, you haven't figured out what the 10 are. You're going to see it's very obvious knowing me. But, oh, yeah, of course he's going to pick these. So we go to number 10 is Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. And this was fun. Where you can... Okay, so there's the sequence where he's fighting the bad guys on that... What is it? The scaffolding on the outside. My mom... We watched this at my mom's. All right? Uh, it was on Disney Plus. We watched it at my mom's. And she was downstairs doing laundry, and she she turned on the Alexa, and had her playing Amazon music, and Purple Rain was on, and so I muted the TV, and the whole fight sequence was to Purple Rain, Purple Rain, and it worked like it it it's, I'm telling you when he gets to that fight sequence, put on Purple Rain on your phone or something, and just watch it, to that song, and it works. It's it's great. And I thought this was pretty good. I don't understand what people are... You know, oh, this is terrible. It's the worst. It's worst. You've seen Eternals? Eternals is the worst. But this was good. I can't see... I can't wait to see where they're going. And the director of this is doing... Uh, Avengers The King Dynasty. So I can't wait for that. It wouldn't be my top ten without some Nicolas Cage. So, if you can figure it out. Number nine is... Willie's Wonderland. And this is just... This is fantastic. From beginning to end, it's fantastic. And Nicolas Cage does not say a fucking word, but still is is still able to get out Nicolas Cage isms playing that. <laughs> it's fantastic. Just killing these stupid animatronic things. It's fun. Number eight, Godzilla versus Kong. Uh, I. Just, I like this movie. I just, you know, it's in the top 10, obviously. But my biggest problem with it is that, like, there's too much focus on Kong in this. Like, the whole thing is Kong has to get to this hollow earth. And, like, Godzilla's out there. And then you have to put in Mecha Godzilla. I, I don't understand. I understand these kind of versus movies. you got to have something in the middle. In Freddy vs. Jason, you have the humans. Eddie vs. Predator, you have humans. You gotta have something be in the middle. And with Godzilla vs. Kong, they're both not inherently evil, so you gotta have something that'll make a Godzilla. I just... Even though it was hinted at the end of King of the Monsters that it was gonna be 
another Ghidra or Metal Ghidra or something, they went with Metal God's, uh, Mecha Godzilla and used the excuse, oh, well, they used Ghidra's head to power it. And then Ghidra's head makes it go crazy cuckoo nuts. But, yeah. Number seven is Mortal Kombat! Do, 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 in this, I don't say Cole Quinn, but Cole Young in the, into this movie. And I feel like if you just changed a few things, and instead of making Scorpion his ancestor, you could have it be Liu Kang, make the ancestor the great Kung Lao, and poof. Where would Scorpion come in? You could write Scorpion in there somewhere. You know? But, as it is, it's it's fine. I showed my son this too and he liked it. The original was still better, but it's fine. All right. Number six. And like I said, this plays to my favorites. These top five are all ones, you know. Number six is F9 of Fast Saga. And yes, this jumps, this series jumped the shark a long time ago. But bringing back uh, Han is just a big thing. I just wish they didn't put that in the trailers because I hate it when they put stuff in trailers and then in the film itself they act like it's a big surprise. Like, oh, he's still alive. yeah, but people who saw the trailer already know he's still alive, except for Big LT who watched it with me and forgot that I did a trailer reaction where I revealed, you know, in the trailer reaction I was like, what? He saw the trailer reaction but forgot about it, and I was like, it. My trailer reaction, remember? Oh, yeah, you know, but, yeah. Uh, this is just good, clean fun now. And I, I don't expect them to be great movies, but, I don't know. Introducing Dominic's brother, John Cena, who's not in the next one, by the way, but bringing in Jason Momoa to do something, I don't know. Uh... Number five is Halloween Kills. This was my number four, and then I decided to switch it because I did Halloween Kills. Michael. Number five. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I've watched this probably the most of all these, obviously, but uh, I feel like the extended cut was a better ending. I, I feel like it was a better setup for what they were going to do. I really don't know what they're going to do with this new one. That trailer has me all sorts of confused. But, yeah, this was, uh, this was fine. Perhaps too much on the message of the mob mentality stuff, but I didn't hate this movie at all. Number four is Zack Snyder's Justice League. If this is the Justice League movie we needed, maybe cut down an, uh, an hour of it. This is four hours. To the point they can't even put it here. This is my big complaint. You can't put it on one Blu-ray. They couldn't even put it on one 4K. Like, you can put five episodes of a TV series, Warner Brothers, on it. Like season one of the Flash, right here. Here we go. Season one of the Flash. I got it right here on the Blu-rays. All right. Season one of the Flash. Disc one. Six fucking episodes on one disc. You can't put a four-hour movie on one Blu-ray disc. I want to be able to sit and watch it. See, that's the thing. I want to be able to sit and watch something. I want to sit and watch, watch the whole thing. I'm not going to want to have to put one disc in and put another disc in. That's why I like that they put the original It Mini series on a Blu-ray, one disc. Because I had to have to go and I had to have to wait. Till it was done, go up, flip it to the other side, and put it back in. It was on one disc before, but it was two-sided. You know, they should do two-sided Blu-rays. Can they do that? I don't know, but this was great. There's some things they needed to cut. The whole nightmare sequence at the end wasn't really necessary, but, you know, it's a great film. Top three now, and number three is Ghostbusters Afterlife. Now, I don't get the hate for this movie at all. I thought it was great. Yes, it's family-friendly. Deal with it. Ghostbusters is going to be family friendly. And this was a great return. I, I did like that they didn't try to force 
the original Ghostbusters in. You think, oh, we, we people are playing. Oh, we have to have the Ghostbusters as the main characters. Well, you don't. You have these characters. The Ghostbusters show up at the end, and it's fun, and it, it's great. Number two. No time to die, James Bond. And this was. I'm sitting right over this. He killed my boy. He killed off James Bond. But you know, it was a fitting end, although I don't know how they're going to do it now. It's going to be, have to be a reboot, right? But this was great. Siphon, the only complaint I really have really is that Siphon was not really that good of a villain. Uh, it would have been better if he was a redo of Dr. No, but they just. And for all the bringing in Spectre in the last film, it was just kill off Spectre, you know, like that. Yeah. And no one knew Madeline was pregnant, but she was going in and out of the facility for months, but they didn't know she was pregnant and had a child. I don't know. But number one, if you haven't guessed, Spider-Man No Way Home. Definitely, definitely number one. Bringing back the two other Spider-Mans. Bringing back classic villains. Good action scenes. Good character drama. Ending kind of sucked. But you know what? I'm not holding it against it. You know? There you go. I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. Okay? I did it. There's my ranking. Only 8 months and 16 days late. But it's done. Alright? So what are your thoughts on my ranking? If you have comments, well, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. I gotta start writing down stuff for the next one. Uh, I think I'll have, I don't know, I don't know, I just see what's left for this year and if there's any I need to do, but that probably is, I'm just forgetting, but. So, thank you for watching, I've been Scotty, I'll see you in the next one.